Bugs in C++. Does that even happen? Welcome to a new series in which we have a look at various bugs that can happen in C++ and hopefully help you avoid them. Today we're going to be talking about references and how maybe you should be careful when you make references to various things because they might just not be as innocent as they seem. Jumping straight into an example, this is a very fabricated example. You probably wouldn't write code that looks exactly like this, but can you spot the issue over here? So we're creating this brand new vector of strings called fruits. Then we're using the pushback function a bunch of times just to add some elements to it. Again, not exactly realistic. You'd probably just write out the list, you know, in the constructor as a static initializer list. Ignore that. That's not what this is about. And then what do we have over here? We have a variable called first fruit that is a string reference. So we're just trying to have like a nice name to refer to the very first fruit inside this data structure. Seems innocent enough. I don't want to have to keep referring to fruits zero. I just want to have this string reference that is the first fruit so I can then maybe print it later. But what's this? Uh, I'm actually going to add something else to the collection first and then print the first fruit. Doesn't that seem like it would work? Well, let's run this code and see what happens. Oh, okay. So it looks like we have some read access violation. If we have a look at the call stack, then it's all like inside, well, it's inside the print line function, but it seems to just not be able to format the string correctly or something. It seems a bit weird. And if we go back up here, we can see that it's happening as a result of this print line, because what are we trying to print? First fruit error reading characters off string. The size of the string is apparently that big and it's just can't read the characters of the string. What has happened? Well, what we've done is we've taken a reference to an element inside this vector. How does that work? Let's talk a little bit more about how references work and what they kind of are. I have a video about references in C++, by the way. I'll have it linked up there. Make sure you also watch the pointers video because that's kind of related as you're about to find out. References are just pointers, but with a little bit more syntactic sugar and slightly different semantics. References are not something that you need to have in the language from a functionality point of view. You can achieve everything you want to achieve with references by just simply using pointers. In fact, C, the language C, doesn't have references. It's only got pointers. So let me rewrite this without using references. I'm just going to use pointers as if this was C. Obviously we have a vector here, which is not C, but ignore that. So I'll change the reference to a pointer and then we're simply going to get the memory address of fruits zero. This might be revealing a little bit more about the issue. Memory address of fruits zero. So we are directly getting the memory address of the string that is inside this data structure. And then what can happen when we decide to push something else into the vector? it might have to grow, it might have to resize, it might have to reallocate memory. So if we currently have a vector somewhere in our memory with four elements in it, we have our apple, orange, plum and pear, that's them over here, and then suddenly we wanna add this grapefruit, there's no room for it, so it has to reallocate that memory. What does that look like? Well, it can vary, but let's just say that it will find an entirely new block of free memory somewhere else. It will allocate at least enough space for all of the elements that we now request to be in that data structure. So in this case, five, and then it will copy across all of the elements into these new blocks of memory, not one at a time, hopefully. And then our grapefruit gets put into here. Now our first fruit pointer or reference doesn't matter. This is pointing to here, and this will stay pointing to here no matter what we do with the vector because it's pointing to memory, a memory address. It's not some sort of alias for fruits zero and it will remain that way. No, it's that actual fixed point in memory. And then so obviously once all of this has been copied, we have our brand new block of memory, this is getting freed, it's getting deleted. So now we still have this variable pointing to deleted memory, freed memory. Whereas what you might expect if you just don't think about it hard enough is that, ah, oh yeah, I have my reference to, you know, fruit zero. So it doesn't matter what happens to the vector. It's always going to be that first element in there. No. And obviously this makes a lot more sense. I think if you just write it out like this as a pointer, because now it's like, well, yeah, this is the memory address of this element. And then if the vector reallocates memory in that old memory gets freed, then this is now invalid. But when you write things as references, it just might be something that you don't expect. Should this mean that you shouldn't use references in C++, just use pointers everywhere? No, you just have to keep in mind that that's how references work. They're just pointers and you have to be aware of what exactly you're referencing because ultimately you're referencing memory. A safer way to reference a particular element inside this data structure would be by its index. So for example, you could have first fruit, which is a little bit 
silly in this case, you can set that to zero. And so now you still have to access this data structure, but you have that particular element in there that you wanna access. Probably makes a bit more sense if we say something like plum, like we wanna be referencing the plum, which is at index two. That means that no matter where we are before or after this memory reallocation, it doesn't matter, we're still gonna be correct unless that element actually moves within the data structure, which could happen if we insert something between origin plum, because then plum would be index three. But this is the much safer way to do this compared to just taking a reference. You can still do this, but you just have to be mindful. You just have to be careful of hey, I'm addressing memory directly, and that memory may move. Wanna have a dashboard of information at a glance without getting distracted or losing focus? Check out Terminal, the sponsor of this video. Terminal is an e-ink dashboard companion that helps you stay focused. It's just this small, convenient, open platform display with a battery that lasts between two months and one and a half years. Oh, and it's super affordable, available from just $139. It's a great way to display whatever information you like anywhere in your house. You could show your calendar or the weather in the kitchen for the whole family to see, for example, or you could take it to your office and display some work-related information. Put it wherever you like. I've had it for the last month or so, and I really like it. The whole family does. Terminal is powered by plugins, which display all of this information on the screen. They currently have over 78 first party plugins and hundreds more private plugins. And of course, you can easily make your own. You can control how it cycles between plugins to show different information or create views that show more than one plugin on the screen at the same time. Terminal is available in a wide range of colors. I have the white one here. Click my link in the description below and check it out. Huge thank you to Terminal for sponsoring this video. Now, if this seems like a little bit of a weird example and it seems like something that it would never happen to you because you don't take references of variables within data structures. Another thing to consider is the fact that if you just had a function over here that maybe took in a string, how would you take in that string? By const reference, most likely. So here, for example, is a particular fruit that we take in. If we simply pass in fruits zero over here, and then perhaps this function modifies this fruits vector in some way like by adding an element to it, then this is still a reference that will become invalid potentially and might be a bomb just waiting to go off. Oh, but taking in const string references, what is this like 2005? I would just use a string view. That's like, yeah, that's, you know, who uses const string references? Well, that's the same thing. A string view is just a pointer to the data with a size. So it's kind of like a string pointer. It's pointing to memory inside the string. So if you have a string that is allocated like this on the stack and the actual characters of the string are small enough for small string optimization, meaning that the actual characters are just stored inside the string class without having a pointer to an external block of memory that contains the actual data of the string, then it's gonna move and your string view is going to become invalid just the same way as a string reference would. So if we take this and we just use a string view here instead of a string, and then I just leave in the exact same code that I had in the beginning, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna print this. So it didn't actually crash, but it printed this, which is obviously invalid compared to if we do the printing before pushing back the grapefruit and it prints apple which is correct. So this is the same concept, this is the same problem. The moral of the story is that whenever you take references or pointers to actual blocks of memory, just be aware that if those move, you're gonna be in trouble. Now, I realize that this example in and of itself might be a little bit silly because you might think, who would do this realistically? Like in the real world, you probably wouldn't take some kind of alias to this, then add something to it like this and then print it, it seems, a bit weird, a bit fake. Well, here's another example that I prepared, which I think is a little bit more realistic, and I have seen this happen in the real world. We have a node struct here, it's just a node in a tree, it's got a name, and it's got a vector of unsigned integers, which is just indices to other nodes, which are this node's children. We have a vector of nodes, this is our actual data structure, and then we're gonna build the tree by creating a bunch of nodes. So let's push back this root node, and then we wanna push back child one and child two, but we obviously need to add those children to the root node's children structure. And it's obviously gonna be annoying to keep referring to the root node by just nodes zero all the time like this. So instead, why not just create an alias to it? We'll just create a reference and then we'll also add the indices of these nodes that we're creating into that root node's children. Seems great, but you can probably see the problem here. We're creating this node reference to node zero, but then we're obviously modifying the node's data structure itself. So as soon as we do this, this will basically become invalid. The other problem with this whole situation, by the way, is that it's not exactly deterministic because we don't know how many times the vector will resize. We do have some control over that, but it's not like 
every time we add something to this node's data structure, it will reallocate memory. We could even fix the bug here potentially by just saying, let's reserve three elements worth of memory here. So we have enough memory for this. So therefore this will technically be valid because the memory is not moving. And that's also part of the problem. It's inconsistent. It's hard to tell whether or not this will end up being a problem. So the solution would be just to not use this root alias, even though it looks nice, and instead just use node zero. The other possibility is you might have a function that does in fact return a node reference called get root node or something like that. And then that will just return nodes zero. And then the idea is that every single time you need that root node, you call the get root node function. And then that will always work because yes, it's returning a reference, but every time you call it, it's gonna look up node zero zero and give you a reference to that, which again is the same as just writing this, but you may prefer the look of that and there's no like zero index floating around. I could see why some people would prefer either of these two options. Another random example off the top of my head is with strings. If I even have a string that has like, I don't know, a bunch of text in it, I might want to access a particular character in there. Obviously there's not 50 characters in here, but maybe I'm just accessing one of these characters and then I'm gonna keep adding to it. It might have to reallocate case memory, a string is really just a data structure. It's kind of like a vector. So then accessing this C variable, that's reference to a particular point inside here is going to potentially be dangerous. Undefined behavior might result in a crash depending on what it is you actually do with this string. Let me know in the comment section below if you've encountered this kind of bug before. If you have some other examples, feel free to share them as well. I've got a pretty long list of bugs for this series, but if you have some suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and this new idea for a series. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and I will see you next time. Goodbye.